I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Secretary to no roll call. Well, That's you. I'll take that. All present, Pat, uh, Pat via phone, Dave via video. video. Pat, are you going to be able to give us the correspondent report? Yep, I'm having a hard time understanding you. Am I up? Yes. You're up. Okay. Um, I talked about some bills that were um, going before the governor last month, and he did sign three of them. Uh, one requires the department, the DPI, to create an online portal that displays all the financial data collected from all school districts. That one, he, that signed. Uh, the other one was the uh, both the safe haven law. The districts have to put that into their curriculum. Remember the safe haven law is that a parent can leave a newborn that's under 72 years, 72 hours old with the police and 9-11 staff or the hospital without fear prosecution. That one was signed. And the other one that was signed was um, a bill that requires schools to provide information to parents on youth apprenticeship. What did not pass was the overhaul of the reading readiness program. Um, that would have been another mandate and unfunded, of course, so that's how the AGDR. Um, we all know that the 1.2 trillion bipartisan infrastructure bill cleared the, United, cleared the House, and it might have got signed today by the President, I'm not sure. Um, there's some things in there for education, uh, for broadband investment, clean energy for school buses, uh, grants to schools and nonprofits for energy efficient improvements, uh, to remove lead contamination in the school drinking water. So there's some, some things in there for, for education. And then lastly, I probably have all heard about the controversy going on between the National School Board Association, the White House, and the Department of Justice. Um, because of that, uh, with the Wisconsin Association of School Boards, voted to withdraw its association with that with that organization. Um, they're citing it, it's, they said the core responsibility of local school boards is to promote community engagement and foster relationships. And they said unfortunately the National School Boards Association needlessly call, caused substantial controversial this fall, controversy this fall which has negatively impacted relationships among school boards, parents, and community members. Um, Important to note that Wisconsin is one of 26 state school board associations to pull out of that organization. So mm -hmm. that's my report for the night. Okay. Question: <clears throat> Are you sure? Are you sure we pulled out, yes. or yes. we just take a, took a step back? No, we took a step back. We took a step back. We took I, a, I talked to, to. We took a step yes, exactly. back. I talked to him. Yeah. I talked to him. Because I think our dues. Our dues have. To withdraw its, its association's participation. Right. We're taking a pause. Yeah, we're taking a pause. We're taking a pause. We're on November 5th to withdraw the association's participation in the National School Board Association. They're going to relook at it, but for now, they pulled our association. Right. But our dues are paid through How July. Because I think our dues, our, dues are, are paid through our July. dues are paid for, right. so. Because right. at least that's what um, yep. I was, we had that discussion at CESA on Wednesday. Yes. I talked to John Ashley. Oh, you did? I called him. I talked okay. to him at length, yes. So we're taking a pause. Our dues are paid. Um, are there uh, things that were going on that were not what many states wanted? The, the uh, person that was chosen to be the leader is resigning or forced to leave, and there's all kinds of... At the national At the national level, level. Yeah. right. So what's so, in her report isn't exactly what is actually well, happening. Well, I talked to John Ashley last week. Friday, maybe? Okay. Thursday or Friday? Yeah. So okay. they they okay. are trying to hire a new executive for the national organization, but they haven't done that yet. So our dues are paid through July of 2022. Okay. So we're just taking a pause. Well, maybe with the new executive, <coughs> right. we'll reevaluate, and then maybe our pause will end. Right. Who and knows? as he said, there are many things that are good with the National Association, but this has been kind of an ongoing Irritation from many state leaders. Okay. Okay. Good. Any other questions for Pat? 
Thank you, Pat. Moving on to you, Mick. Yeah. Um, I don't really have a whole heck of a lot. <clears throat> Uh, Jeff was down in Florida, so we, we used the new media room, which is really nice. I mean, there's, it's beautiful. It's got plug-ins all over on the tables. You can, there's microphones all over, so you don't have to worry about it, hearing. And, CISA. and CISA, yeah, yeah. It's, it's really nice. And they've set it up so for taking training, you know, so people don't have to run to Green Bay. I mean, I, he can see us. You can, I mean, it's, it's really nice. So it was kind of nice to have the meeting in there so we could see how it all worked. Mm -hmm. um, he did talk about the student loan forgiveness program, and it's anybody in the private sector. Um, there's 149 people in our CISA 7 region that have taken advantage of this. Um, it's driven on by your income. You have to be in the private public sector for 10 years working, um, and it's about a $455 to $5 a month savings. Um, wow. So, yeah, yeah it's, a big it's, deal. it's a pretty big yeah. deal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's 900 and some that filled out the paperwork but didn't pull the trigger because it, it, it costs you like $900 a year to join um, and do this every year, but still, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um, the convention, as far as we know, as I know, is still going on in person down in Milwaukee. Um, I don't know if they're going to require proof of vaccination or masks or um, nobody kind of knows that yet, So, but they are planning on having it. Um, I would think in person. They, I think they would have to have that on the registration. You would think so, so but I, yeah. So I don't think they're. They they there. couldn't tell me yes or no. Sue so today yeah. or and what's Andrew, yeah. whatever his last name is. They both sit on the policy committee, <coughs> so they couldn't tell me. So okay. I got to figure out what I'm going to do. That's it. Any questions for Mick? Oh, and I did get my I did get my uh, thing from the W. WASB on uh, looking to find a new administrator, the binder. Okay. It's quite extensive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there is, whenever you're looking for new people, it's yeah. a lot of work. But, so anyway, okay. that's my homework. Okay. <laughs> Student representative report. Julia. Um, so one last thing for football, because I know every time I've been here, I've been talking about football. But um, we want to congratulate Carter Dashlett and Caden Barden for getting eight-man South region, all region. So they got, um, Carter Dashlett got offensive line award, and then Caden Barden got defensive back award for that. And then um, basketball is in full swing now. Girls basketball has a game tomorrow against Ashwaubenon, and they had a uh, scrimmage on Saturday. And then boys basketball is, their first practice is right now. Um, band, the, they, uh, both bands had um, performed at the Veterans Day concert on Wednesday for the Veterans Day, obviously. And then, um, Middle school performed at the elementary school Veterans Day program, which was on Thursday. And then December 11th, there will be the dinner concert, and that's like fund fundraising for the band trip. And then choir went to Carthage College, and then they were able to tour the campus, and then they had a clinical with the chorus teacher that's at the campus. And then they were able to listen to other choirs from around the area, and they were able to perform, so I thought that was pretty cool for them to do. And then they, um, vocal ensemble performed at the Veterans Day program, which was on Thursday. And then they will also be participating at the dinner concert. And then um, social studies and English for the freshmen are doing cross-curricular activities. Um, that's where they're learning about leadership and they are researching um, people throughout history that were leaders. And then they have to do a presentation on that. And then they also did um, art integration, which is English and art combined, and then that's like an artist collage where they were able to work together and make a collage with um, magazines. And then Miss Lewis is also making like, or having their, her students make masks with um, fears from the, or what their fears are, and then they have to portray it with um, with it just at, at a glance. So they had people, um, mannequins, I think, and then they put like clay on that and they have to paint their fear on it. So I thought that was really cool. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then that's it. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Questions for Julia? That was a lot. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a lot going on. Okay. Next section is misconceptions and rumors. Um, not a whole lot. 
on this meeting. The first thing I would like to say, though, is that I think that there's some misunderstanding of in terms of our meeting. Um, this is a monthly business meeting of the school board held in public. It is not a public meeting. We've got the public participation time because we do want input and we do post our agenda so that you can see what <coughs> we're we'll discussing in our business meeting so that you can give us input, you know, so that we have, you know, so that we've heard it before we're making our discussion and our decisions. Um, it's our responsibility to listen respectively, you know, respectfully to anybody who wants to speak to us. But then after the public participation part, the public's role is that of observer. And we would expect then that you would allow us to continue on with our business meeting. We are in this configuration, which can look a little confusing, like we're talking to you guys when we're talking, but that's just because we're set up this way. But it's really our meeting, and we're set up this way so that the audio for the tapes and everything is heard better. So the intention isn't that we're, I mean, some people have felt like we're um, ignoring the group that's out there, or we're talking to them if we're talking negatively about something and that really isn't the case so I just sort of wanted to clear that up because that seems to be sort of a misunderstanding of a lot of people um, the next one I want to bring up is something that's been running around about the elementary school and I think maybe I'll let uh, ooh, Katie discuss it but it had to do with that our that our students there are a year or two behind students in other schools. Oh, yeah. Yes. And I don't know, Barb, that I have a whole lot to add to that. I just think, um, like you said, that's something that I that was kind of brought to me. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, you know, as is standard practice with most school districts, you purchase a curriculum and it aligns just so to the standards, X, Y, Z. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, we have to remember that we're teaching children and we're not, you know, teaching robots and, you know, we have to adapt to what they really need. And I think that's where the art of teaching really comes in. Um, so we could have, you know, the perfect curriculum, but at the end of the day, we're serving our students. We're not... Um, well, and, and again, with this um, discussion that's out there, there's, you know, what are they looking at? Mm -hmm. I mean, I know that there are certainly students in every school district that are struggling a little bit because of the whole pandemic, and, and especially the schools that were virtual or partly virtual or whatever. Yeah. So yeah. there are some kids, it's a recognized need that they need to catch up. But I certainly have never seen in any of our test scores or anything that we are behind any other school. So hopefully that rumor will die out and you've heard it here. It's not true. And then the last thing, I know we've said it before, but I'm going to say it again because it just it seems to be something that keeps coming up in the news that I'm reading in terms of school districts. Let me say it now, we have never and have no intention to teach critical race theory at this school. We never have, we never will. So we've said that before, but I know people, it's still out there and they're concerned about it, so I wanted you to hear it from me. Agreed? Yeah. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, we are to public participation. Could you? Thank you. Rory Vanderland. Um, it's my understanding that uh, everybody backs Ann Schmidt on the board. For what she said. That's what it was said in the news and everything. I was I was wondering if everybody could clarify that. You guys are on the board and 
say on screen. Um, can can yeah. we respond to that? Yeah, I, I think, think so. I think I will respond to that. Yes, I I back and as a as a board member. Okay. No, I'm, I'm not talking about her as a board member. I'm talking about what she said. I am allowing her to have an opinion and maybe say it in an awkward way, but I do not feel that personally that has any impact on her ability to be an excellent board member. So I support her. Can the rest of us say? Yes. Please. Okay. <clears throat> this is my take on this. Um, although I, I don't think I agree with how it came out. Um, nor would I have, would have, I think she would like to have been said something a little different. Um, but I do defend her right to say it under the Constitution. Um, so that's where I stand on it. Okay. Um, I was just wondering if that's the norm. Like, this is the standard because it doesn't seem like anything happened from it. I mean, she made a statement that said she was embarrassed. She never actually apologized. I, I just, I can't, I can't sit and think that that's just, that's just okay. That that's just normal. Um, I, I don't know. Is there some sort of a? There might be some sort of policy you guys can come up with to make sure that this doesn't happen again. Maybe some punishment for something like that. Uh, I was hoping that. Um, it's a toughie. Because it's elected. I was hoping that. Uh, we would be past this at this point. An apology sure would work. And I actually printed off a um, little sheet here to help you formulate an apology. You must understand that these are our kids that you're talking about. And when you tell us that if they simply don't agree with you, they can just die. It doesn't sit right. And it's got to be, you need to be held accountable for it. You need to, you need to come up with a real apology. Rory? Um, are you, I mean, you do realize that this board, I mean, I can tell you a strong, strong interest and strong feelings about this, right? And, and that's your right. But do you realize that this board has absolutely no jurisdiction over your children because you have them in a private school? I stay, I play taxes here. Yes, you do. Okay. And but I, and when I, you say our... I intend on getting my kids back into school as soon as all this mask and COVID crap is done. Okay. That's so. certainly, you're right. I just wanted to make sure you realize because you seem so strongly, you know, Yeah, because my kids this. were in, in, in uh, public mm -hmm. school. Mm -hmm. This does involve my kids. Can all right, we've heard you. Can we say anything else? Can if you would like to say something, yeah. These, we're all elected. I mean, we just can't say, poof, you're gone, because they're elected by you guys. But there's got to be something that can be I mean, we can't just go around saying, hey, your kids can just die, and then just push it under the rug and well, you know, misinformation and, and pretend it never happened. I understand. I, I get and that. Then, and then she never even apologized. That's the thing. If she would apologize, actually apologize last meeting, I wouldn't be here today. Mm -hmm. But she didn't even apologize. She did not even use the words, I'm sorry. She said I was embarrassed. And then she went on a rant about how the masks work. Okay? Yeah. That's not good enough for me and my kids. It's not good enough for a lot of people. But again, we are elected. You know, we're elected. I understand. Thank you. Okay, he was the only one who signed in, so we'll move on. Board President's announcements. Um, I guess all I would say, um, because we had this early meeting, because we have a Thanksgiving holiday coming up. So I'm hoping that it gives everyone a chance to have a little bit of a break and some family time and some good food. And I wish everybody, the staff and the board and the district, a happy Thanksgiving. Mark, can I just say that the veterans concert evening was amazing. I'm hoping that a lot of people were able to go. It was wonderful. Um, I don't know how that stage can hold any more people than we're up <laughs> on that stage, but somehow it works. 
and it was uh, a great tribute to our local veterans and any veterans that showed up. It was an amazing program. So. They put it on the Facebook page okay. so people could can see, see it. See it was oh, okay. really wonderful. Both yes. the, the band performance and then the one act play mm -hmm. down there as well. I mean, to have the kids play with the the community band members that are just so mm -hmm. skilled is just what an experience for them. Yeah. I think you you also attended some of the veterans. I went to the veterans program. Uh -huh. I, I was amazed by those first graders. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It was very, they, it was kind of a last minute addition. I know they were gonna record it and just show a video of it, oh, but Miss Nevue no, had insisted no that they go on stage. So. And they were right on key. It was, right. it was just great. <laughs> so first graders, are, so and they're only many. what, seven years old? Yeah, that's great. Yeah, it really was I impressive. Guess, I guess maybe I am going to say one more thing, and this is to echo what you got in your district letter um, that Nick sent out. I think it would have been a week ago. I don't know if I read. Um, but the district is desperately in need of people. So I'm going to say it again. If anybody knows anybody or you personally have any interest in in, in joining, you know, in in participating in education at the professional level, at a van driver level, at a bus driver level. I mean, subs, there are all different kinds of opportunities. If you know of anybody, this is the time you can really help the district out. If you have any ideas or concerns about the district, I know Nick also reached out and said, contact me, I'm available. Um, anybody that wants to talk to me, let me know and I'll schedule a time. But um, yeah, we we could really use any help of anybody that you can think of or you personally, because we're not exempt from what's happening everywhere, and that's shortages, you know. So <coughs> okay, administrative reports. Superintendent, business managers report. Um, so the first thing I'll start with is the school board candidacy. Um, just important dates. So a notice of non-candidacy must be submitted by December 24th. <coughs> candidacy documents need to be submitted by January 4th, 2022. The information is also posted on the website. Um, so if you need to check in with that or follow up on it it's right there as well so and that's uh, there will be packets here at the high school for people to pick up if they want to fill them out yeah. Jason always gave me a couple too in case somebody popped into my house yeah. so um, I'll talk with Tammy about that next yeah, week. they're always available in the business office okay um, school board convention you guys were talking about it before um, January 19th through the 21st. Um, if you want to get in on the early bird kind of registration, um, that deadline is kind of coming up quickly, December 10th. Um, so that's and your decision on, on that piece, but those are the dates that it's uh, proposed for. And then Barbie just took all my thunder there with <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, I don't um, think it can be said too much. <laughs> yeah, I would just say that um, there's, this is, uh, everybody's experiencing the same thing, right? Everybody's either uh, moving into new opportunities or coming out of an opportunity, and let's don't forget about education. Um, you know, that there's a lot of uh, things right now that make working in education difficult, but I can tell you that working with kids is uh, an enjoyable thing to do, so I would encourage anybody if you have the time. And frankly, um, you know, there's positions from a couple hours a day to uh, <coughs> obviously full-time positions. And uh, yeah, I, I think that it's going to be an ongoing concern of ours for not only this year, but the years to come as well. because. Even when we post stuff, um, you know, like today's, you know, the first day a new custodian started in six months. So that's a long time to post stuff. 
um, and to get viable candidates for that is really difficult. Um, so we have to be able to be relevant and get people on board and uh, certainly uh, we, we need to have conversations too about we have people that have been here working their tails off for the last two years under pretty stressful conditions and right now you can go to Culver's and get a job for seventeen fifty an hour. So we have conversations that we need to have as well because we need to be some, you know, we need to be in, in the market um, as well. And that's going to be a tough thing to handle when we have all the constraints of our budget and revenue limits and, and all that. So, yeah, it's going to be a challenge, but I think, uh, yeah, I guess we have to promote working with kids is why we all do it. So, um, encourage people to ask questions. I know I got a phone call the other day from somebody uh, who just didn't realize the opportunities. So hopefully that comes to fruition. Hopefully we can get people on board and go from there. Yeah. Yeah. Madam President? Yes, Dave. Can you ask Mr. Kutcher to speak up a little bit more? <laughs> I think you do that just to tick me off, Dave. <laughs> I swear to God. He's more horsey today, though. <clears throat> Maybe you should move spots. Yeah, I, was, I was just saying that there's a lot of opportunity in education to get involved. It would be really great um, you know, to work with kids, but we have to also have some conversations internally. Since I can go to Culver's and get a job for $17.50 right now, um, so hopefully you heard all of that loud and clear as you are enjoying your snacks. <laughs> What's that? Is that like you tapping out or what? What, what, was, what was that? that? Was that better, Dave? <laughs> okay. Any questions for me? <laughs> All right, we will move on. Elementary principals report. All right, um, a huge thank you to everyone who helped to make the Veterans Day program a huge success. Um, Ms. Nevue coordinated a lot at the elementary school. Uh, Mrs. Massey, obviously, with her band students. Um, Mr. Robertson and his choir students. I know Julia spoke. Um, we had our fourth grade students write poems. Our first grade students, as Ann mentioned, sang a song. Our second grade students led the Pledge of Allegiance. Um, so it was just a really great team effort, um, for sure. I actually had a lot of feedback from people who did not attend, but viewed the um, live stream on YouTube. So that was really nice, um, a, a, a nice addition. We hadn't done that in the past. Um, so a, a lot of good feedback on that. So thank you to everyone who made that a success. Um, our parent-teacher conferences are, are this week, Thursday evening, from 3.30 to 6.30 p.m. Um, most parents should have received information and been able to sign up for a time to meet with their teachers, their children's teachers. Um, fifth and sixth grade are running more of a drop-in style um, conference, um, just given the nature of the teachers departmentalizing. Um, they just wanted to keep it flexible so that parents could visit with the teachers that they wanted to the most. Um, the PTS will be providing pizza for the staff, so a huge thank you to them. It can always be a long night, but um, we always appreciate the PTS, uh, PTS's contribution to that. And then just a quick note about holiday helpers. The program has been kicked off for the 2021 holiday season. Mrs. Jamie Robinson is once again organizing that. There will be the caring tree at Denny's. Um, the students at the elementary school will be, the stock, will be doing the stocking fundraiser again. Um, and then all of the money that is collected at the elementary school um, will be used. Uh, the peer leaders will go on a shopping trip and get presents for the families of children who um, are facing financial hardship or other, financial, other hardships um, currently in their lives. So... Um, just a quick note about that. If um, that's something that there's anyone who would like to participate in, I know that that form was shared in the district communication the last time that it went out about a week ago, and then it was in the family folder at the elementary school. And we'll include it again the next couple of weeks as well. So that's all for me. Yeah, getting ready for the holidays. Yes. Questions for Katie? 
Okay. Middle school, high school principals report and Pathfinder update. Katie, are you there? <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> um, so two of my things, Julia and I are gonna have to talk because she took two of the things in there, but I'll just over and over things. Um, my first thing is the teacher focus group. So I have um, eight teachers that uh, met last week um, to just kind of look over and think like what's going well, what's not going well at the high school, um, and looking at how we can um, use some of our SR funds to focus on um, some improvements and um, kind of getting students back to where they need to be. So um, we're going to be meeting every other week and kind of dive further into the list that we came up with and see how we can um, improve some of our mental health things and some of our academics. Um, my second thing is the student leadership presentations, um, which Julia touched on as well. So the freshman in English and social studies class did a cross-curricular project um, where students had to identify and research a leader, and then they presented to myself and some other staff members. Um, and it was just a really great experience for both myself and the kids. Um, and they had to discuss um, what leadership traits that they found the leaders that they research to have and then um, formulate their own personal leadership philosophy. Um, so it was really great. I got to see some of the students that generally wouldn't stand up in front of class, give some really awesome presentations. So I um, just wanted to talk about that a little bit. And then the last thing was just I wanted to give a shout out to Miss Lewis. So last year she was the middle school um, English teacher and the art teacher. Um, and she really wanted to dive more into the art side of her um, degrees that she has. So this year she is solely um, our art teacher and has really um, taken it on. Um, her classes are full to the max and there's a lot of students getting to create um, more art than they were able to um, last year and the year before. Um, she didn't want to let her English uh, part fall though, so she does an English and art integration class where the students um, have been reading Edgar Allan Poe poems, which as we know are kind of deeper and darker poems, but um, I know Julia touched on it, but they were able to um, then make masks of what their greatest fears were, and the mask turned out really cool, super creepy as well, but um, she's just really letting, kind of using um, art as a therapeutic thing for the kids, and they're able to just you know, get out what's on their mind. And then I just invite you to um, check out right outside my office the glass cases that Miss Lewis has been um, putting all the new art and she updates it um, more than once a week with things that the kids are creating. So it's been a really, really nice to have a full time art teacher back um, and then also giving them the experience to have that uh, English and art integration class. Thank you. That's it. Yeah. Good. Any questions for Katie? Thank you, Katie. Special Ed Report, Marie. I just have one brief thing to share tonight. Um, for our occupational therapist, we were searching for one for most of the year. Um, a special shout out to Hannah Herlin, who is the occupational therapist from Kiwani, has been helping us out on a short-term contract. And she is phenomenal, and I really, really enjoy working with her. Um, if only she could take on more hours to help meet the needs of our students. I would fight for that because she is that good. But Purveya, who we contract out to um, for our occupational therapists and physical therapists, got back to us last week that they have found us an occupational therapist that will hopefully start um, starting December 1st with Purveya and then hopefully with us shortly after. So excellent. Good. That will help. Yeah, it's always nice to hear. Any other questions for me? Okay. Algoma Venture. Nope. Live Algoma Monthly Update. Sorry. Yeah. Algoma something. <laughs> um, just real quick, I think one thing I want to highlight is um, we are going to be spotlighted again in the state of Wisconsin for one of our innovative projects. Um, this just grew um, across my desk this morning, but um, they're spotlighting our community youth advocate position. So this was a grant funded position 
Um, it was an innovation grant by the Wisconsin Department of Children and Families, and um, it is Algoma in partnership with Kiwani County. And it's the first year we did really well, and they gave us continuation grant dollars. And now that grant is ending, um, but of all of the kind of innovation funds they disseminated in the state of Wisconsin, they are selecting ours and two others to spread and scale um, the model. And they're going to be spotlighting um, both the position, but also our process. So we've done some creative things. We have like a youth profile um, that kind of connects three systems together. And then our resource, um, mobile resource center, they're spotlighting. And then the third thing is our Connect the Dots program, which essentially asks our children to identify five people outside of school and outside of their home that they can um, go to for safe, tr trusted support if they need it. Really thinking about community and other people beyond um, who they normally see. So they are uh, taking those three and um, I can foresee, I don't have any verification, but I can foresee this then being you know, grant funds later for other communities to try to adapt something like this in their own county. So if once I get word that they have posted that, I will definitely send it through. Um, and that's so you're saying they're renewing the funding for us? They're not renewing mm -hmm. our funding, um, okay. but they did renew it. So it was a year grant that we got in 2020, and they saw our success in just one year and then gave us a renewal grant um, for 2021. That's ending now. Okay. Um, but they're spotlighting our program as one of the three best practices of all the And who's spotlighting this? The Wisconsin Department of Children and Families. So it's through the state of Wisconsin, but specifically that department. And they'll be spotlighting it through something called their issue briefs and their website. Got it. I know last time I said it too fast and then I said I told Tammy, go talk to Teal. <laughs> uh, that's it. I mean we had a tour um, the last time I talked I was mentioning that some people, some of our partners and funders were coming for a tour. Mm -hmm. If you've ever been on a tour with us, you know it's incredible. I don't we don't even have to give the tour. Our youth give the tour. They go to their spots. It's emotional every time. Um, I'll just say one bright spot that sticks in my head. The people that were here viewing it, of course, they see all these programs and the things that we're doing. And um, they went to Wolf Den, and there was this moment where one of our high school students was sharing, felt brave and wanted to share her story. And um, one of our second graders sitting next to her just kind of like put her hand on her leg, just like this, like in support, because she had some stuff she was sharing. Ooh, and um, one of our partners emailed later and said, all the things you guys are doing, like we know it on paper, but when you're there and you see it and feel it, it's successful. And the, when that little girl supported the other with her hand, like you guys are doing amazing things. Like that just told us all we needed to know. So, and were you there? I was not at that one. Oh. Yeah, so I just, it's the emotion that I think for now for myself or you know when we're taking tours we don't have to be part of that leadership anymore they've kind of taken the sales so that's it's really cool to see yeah Gio what have you heard from Jason West he is ready I think it's more on our end and <laughs> no. oh, okay um, he is great I mean he's got um, the second phase done of our sub pages so right now it's just a matter of like our building principals are getting their stuff in a row to have our sub pages and then it's really going to be a lot of work on ours uh, our end to make sure it's opening a can of worms for our district let's That's just cool. be honest because yeah. when you start to redesign a website we know that there needs to be better communication internally process-wise department externally but it's just opening up really good conversation of yes we need to do that and yes we have to do that so there's a lot of light work for individuals principals department heads um, so it's not on his part it's really truthfully on us right now okay I would say we should meet a subcommittee in December like mid-December because then he'll be able to showcase examples of our sub pages and what we have put together and I know Jesse would like to come to the next one because we have some thoughts on registration that I kind of planted seeds about, but I would like to get that 
thought about now so that for next year we have a more streamlined process with that. Okay, I'll set up a meeting. I'll be sure that okay. it's okay with you and Nick and, okay. and John. Okay, any other questions regarding the Laval Duma update? Moving on to the Venture Academy update. We've been meeting one on one with parents, guardians, youth, um, just to check in. And, you know, it's new. We're building it as we're growing it. And um, Nick always says the hardest thing to handle is your success. And it's really successful we have students on the wait list and that's great I think the word is getting out I think people are trusting it more I think what people misconceptions or rumors are kind of you know going falling apart so that's good um, really I want to just share that being part of these one-on-ones was like complete joy for me in the last two years <laughs> um, we've had strong emotion from our parents guardians and youth um, in every meeting and the biggest thing that the themes that have come across is the development in two short months of leadership confidence and taking responsibility of their learning and parents see it at home youth feel it um, we're 7 through 12 and I think that's that's why we developed the pathway um, for youth that weren't really engaged in their learning as much as they could be and to get that feedback in just two months of school and every single meeting we've had was like pure joy like I, pure joy um, one of the things they talked about improvements we asked even when we said hey how can we improve this it was a collaborative conversation it wasn't you should it wasn't you know I have to it was we should together this is what we want and I think that was clear they wanted to be successful um, so one of the improvements was communication and not, I guess, from its communication with the school district. And that was something that we already knew of. Um, and Jesse was really awesome at helping us. But things like school messenger, like because we're our own, coded our own school in the state, we weren't uploaded in school messenger for some time. And we had, you know, we caught that later on. So just things that not by, you know, on purpose, but we're figuring out, you know, those streamlined communication, um, or with Katie Horn, if there's stuff offered in the Legacy School, we just have to make sure that, you know, we're we're not forgetting um, each other in that. So, but that's really the only improvement so far. And um, where are we going to go when we have more and more kids? That was something that we kept talking about. So, I don't know. <coughs> um, but really successful. And we're hiring a full time person and today is the last day to submit your application um, but you know we have till midnight so if anybody's interested in working in the charter pathway we would accept your application um, yeah that's it sounds good mm -hmm. questions on them all right keep up the good work um did we have any committee thing i don't think so Okay, talking to our current COVID statistics, how are we doing? Uh, elementary school is three, middle school, high school is two, staff two, total seven. Um, so they continue to stay. Can you speak up, please? Elementary school is three, middle school, high school is two, and staff is two. So a total of seven in the district out of a total of 810. That's pretty consistent with our last meeting. Yeah. Do we have a lot in quarantine? No. So that's getting better as well. Um, and really, the <clears throat> I think the only frustration is when you have a positive case in a household, and then the quarantining of students in the household. Um, it gets very lengthy um, but outside of that um, you know the number of kids in quarantine has gone down considerably um, so and there are more kids eligible for vaccines too so that's why that's making it yeah. so in my meeting with Gary today I mean there are obviously things that everybody is doing that is limiting all of that so I think those strategies are working um, I mean I 
we did talk about how do we utilize testing to minimize lengthy um, out, out of school quarantine um, kids. So whether that be day five and test them through seven, because right now it's day seven, mm -hmm. um, but it's dependent on obviously people testing. <laughs> um, so, you know, it might be a measure that we look into to decrease the amount of days that kids are out of school, right? So. Is that something we have to change the procedure on? I mean, should we need to get together and take a look at that? Is that something we need to do? I don't think well, we have to. Uh, I, I think so. what we would do is just we already have right. in places. So <clears throat> it'd be at day five, they okay. could come back, and then, you know, they'd be obviously subjected to testing five, six, seven, right, so that you can stay in line with the process. Um, so it obviously helps in that. But where the other part where it helps is when you have a household case and, you know, getting that student back rather than waiting the 10 days and then another 14 yep. days and then you're knocking on close to 30 days out of school. And especially if the child is, you know, asymptomatic, mm -hmm. um, that's a really difficult thing to handle. Um, oh, yeah, so. hard on the student, hard on the family. Right. So I think if there's <clears throat> a way that we can use current practice and then get them back in the school, I don't think, you know, there's necessarily board action. I think it's just okay. a practice that we would employ okay. if people are, you know, okay with that. And again, mm -hmm. it's all dependent on whether or not people are going to be you okay with, with the test, right? Because um, if you're not, then I, you know, you have to assume that you're <coughs> Okay. Any other comments or discussion on this area? Okay. We'll move on to action items. I need a motion to approve the regular board meeting minutes of October 25, 2021, and the budget hearing meeting minutes of October 25, 2021. I so move. I'll second. Motion made by Joanne, seconded by Ann. <coughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. I need a motion to approve the bills that were presented to us. So move. I second. Motion made by Nick. Second. Yeah, you're fine, but no one's here. He just wants you to speak up louder. He can't hear it. Okay, I'm sorry, Dave. I will. I have a motion by Nick, seconded by Jennifer. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. I need a motion to approve the New Orleans Nashville band trip April 9th through the 17th, 2022. I'll move. I'll second. Motion made by Ann, seconded by Joanne. All in favor? Aye. 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 Pat? Yes, I said I. Oh, okay. <laughs> Opposed? Motion carries. I need a motion to approve the 2022-2023 Algoma School District calendar. I so move. Motion made by Joanne. Do I hear a second? Well, second. Seconded by Ann. Questions or discussion on that? We haven't really talked much about it. Is there anything that you'd like to highlight about it, Nick, or any questions um, from anybody? Nothing, nothing really to highlight on it. Um, we will probably come back um, with a you know, suggestion just in terms of uh, February? November. November. Uh, for parent-teacher conferences, mm. specifically related to the elementary school. Um, so obviously we have operated a little bit differently up here for quite some time, but 
strategy around that at the elementary level as well, so that you don't have uh, all the nighttime stuff that the staff up here don't have. So okay, um, that's it. Um, otherwise, you're out of school on May 26th. Um, again, you're starting a little bit earlier pre uh, Labor Day, but just the way the calendar falls it doesn't um, make any sense to start after that because um, you're losing a whole, a whole week of <coughs> that. So. Okay, any uh, questions or discussion? We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. I need a motion to approve the $500 donation from Algoma FFA alumni for Wolf Den. I no, second it. <laughs> I have a motion and a second. Who made the motion? I did. Jennifer. 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 Thanks, Mike. Questions or discussion on that, other than a big thank you? Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. I need a motion to approve a $2,000 donation in memory of That's Ellen nice. McKenna, former a Algoma School District physical education teacher for the Wellness Center. I'll move. I second. Motion made by Ann, seconded by Jennifer. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Motion carries. I don't believe we have any recommended modifications, but I open it up to if anybody is going to make a motion. Hearing none, request for future agenda items. All right, we'll keep going. I need a motion to go into executive session under Wisconsin Statute 19.85. Subsections 1C, E, F, and I for the purpose of personal matters, hires, staffings, resignations. I so hope. Motion made by Jennifer. I'll second. Seconded by Joanne. Roll call vote. Dave. He's muted. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Pat. Yes. Yeah. Jennifer. Yep. Joanne. Yes. Mick. Yes. And, yes. and I also say yes. 